I am tired. It's my senior year and I applied to college, but um, we had a panty and a panoramic and a panda express. And a pan fried Brussels sprouts with caramelized onions and balsamic glaze. What I'm trying to say is, I feel like figuring out which elitist institution would be willing to leech me of my money for the next four years is of secondary importance, given the fact that, um, there's people that are dying, Kim. So yeah, I just no longer have any shits to give. They have all exited my rectum. You know, I probably do care deep down, but for the sake of my mental health, I'm gonna just let myself be deceived. Okay, without further ado, here is my first college decision reaction. Alright. Status update. Woo! I got into UMass. So I just got this box from Vanderbilt, which is very much a surprise because I'm pretty sure they don't release their decisions until April 1st. It says Mosaic Multicultural Student Recruitment Program. I assume they're referring to bacterial culture because I am a pathogen. Anyway, let me try and open this. Okay, this is embarrassing. I can't. <laughs> I can't open a box. It has confetti. <laughs> oh, they gave me a hat. Um, socks. Okay, let me read the words. Um, it says. Dear Jacqueline, congratulations, you have been admitted to the first year class at Medical University in the fall of 2021. You are selected from an exceptionally talented pool of applicants. Although we will mail your official admissions packet. Official admission packet by April 1st, we are notifying you to invite you to attend a virtual mosaic multicultural program. Oh, they gave me a mask too? Wow, very, very pandemic appropriate. I don't know what this is, but thank you. Oh my gosh, this is so nice. Thanks, Vandy. I just got an email from UMass Amherst unrejecting me from the Honors College because apparently it was a typo. <laughs> So I was gonna not apply to art schools because I don't know yet if I want to pursue art full-time in the future and art school is like a commitment. But my friend convinced me at the very last minute to apply to RISD and I was like, you know what? Just for shits and gigs. But my application is garbage, very half-assed. So I already know what the outcome is gonna be. Status update. Oh. Wait, <laughs> but I feel kind of bad. I don't deserve this. <laughs> oh my god. What the freak? So Northwestern came out a couple hours ago, but I was at the grocery store and then I had a Zoom thing. And I wasn't really eager to check it because I just do not have high expectations, but <laughs> here it goes. View update. Rejected! Woo! Oh wait, no, I was waitlisted. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Okay, fun fact, actually really, really sad fact. The guy who interviewed me for Duke works in finance, so do you know what my dumbass decided to say to him? They say that the stock market is just astrology for white men in suits. Yup. Anyway, it is time for me to open my rejection letter. Status update. Oh shit. There's confetti. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Okay. <laughs> Ivy Day. I already know this is gonna be a shitter, but that is okay. Time to get it over with. Okay, I'm gonna go alphabetical order because I'm indecisive. So it'll be Brown, Columbia, Harvard, Princeton, Yale. Yes, okay. Status update. Reject from Brown, okay, cool. Okay, bestie, as you should. Columbia, let's see. Waitlisted from Columbia. Cool. Bitch, what the fuck? Harvard 
why would you let me in? <laughs> Wait, that's so funny. That is so funny. That is literally so funny. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> um, not gonna get into Princeton. I did not get into Princeton. Okay. Yale. I'm not gonna get into Yale because I applied early and then I got deferred. So that was the warm up for round two of rejection. So I already know. It's all good. Yes, I did get rejected from Yale. Okay, cool. That was over in like 30 seconds. Nice. Stanny time. Stanford was the second application I submitted after Yale because they make people who submit our portfolios submit their whole application a month early, which sucks. But thinking back to the things I wrote, I am genuinely embarrassed. Like, I am humiliated that somebody had to read that shit. I will not be getting in, but that is fine. You're shitting me. No, 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 nope, nope. What the fuck? What the mother fuck? <laughs> what? Are you, you're shooting me. No, I did not get it. Well, that's it, folks. So the real reason why I wanted to make a college decision video is so that I could rant about the American higher education system, specifically elite colleges, because they are stinky. First of all, I wanted to preface this by saying how incredibly grateful and privileged I am. A lot of this might sound hecka hypocritical because I'm literally complicit, but just because I'm part of the system doesn't mean I can't criticize it. It's called cognitive dissonance. Basically, higher education in the US is fucked. I think of college kind of like a bubble in economics. Its price in terms of money, time, emotional effort, social capital, etc. does not reflect the value of the underlying asset. It has been so far removed from what it's supposed to be, education, and instead is a crystallization of political and socioeconomic and cultural forces that render it largely symbolic. A symbol of the mythos of the American dream. And I think that's partly why we Americans eat the shit up. We love to believe in meritocracy, that if you just work hard enough, you too, yes you, can make it. There's this concept in psychology called the just world phenomenon, where basically people have the tendency to believe the universe doles out justice so that people get what they deserve and deserve what they get. In other words, if you're successful, it's because you earned it all by yourself. Gold star. And if you're not successful, it's because of your own character failings and not because of, say, oppressive structural barriers like institutional racism or lack of access to resources. So that's the thing. We live in a culture that valorizes the notion of individualism, but in reality is structured on entrenched systems of group privilege. We treat acceptances to elite colleges like they're vindications of hard work, when really, in so many cases, they're just reflections and perpetuators of these structures of privilege. Not only is there the most overt stuff, like the Olivia Jade shit, or donating a building, or the fact that wealthy kids are more likely to have access to niche sports like rowing or golf or squash that help them get recruited, or paying for private tutors and college counselors and SAT prep courses, but there's also more mundane manifestations of privilege, like having access to better schools with more AP class offerings, or not having to work a job to support your family, or even just having a culture within your community where going to college is the norm. These things accumulate and shape our identities and opportunities. Take me for example. I was granted immense privilege in my life by sheer luck. I went to a really good public school. I never had to help my family pay the bills. I've always had access to internet. Both of my parents went to college. So I was pretty much given a head start from the womb. And what did I do to earn it? Absolutely nothing. So if you still believe we live in a meritocracy, 
check your privilege. Highly selective colleges are predominated by wealthy kids already at the top, fighting tooth and nail to stay up there. So basically, they're a mechanism to cling on to privilege, obtained through privilege. In 2017, a study by economist Raj Chetty found that children whose parents are in the top 1% of the income distribution are 77 times more likely to attend an Ivy League college than those with parents in the bottom income quintile. Going to a highly selective school does have some tangible benefits for upward mobility, especially for those of lower income backgrounds. So basically, going to Yale might change the life trajectory of a low-income student, but for a rich kid from a feeder private school, it's basically just resume fodder. The people at the top of the socioeconomic ladder don't even have much room to mobilize upward. So there's this top-down pressure from the wealthy, who value college mainly for the prestige, squeezing out the students who will actually benefit most, predominantly low-income students of color. But even these supposed benefits are problematic because they cause us to place emphasis on pushing lower-income students, especially students of color, into these overwhelmingly white and elitist spaces, which still feeds into the clout machine and makes higher education more unattainable rather than democratizing it. There are other solutions that are undervalued, like investing more in HBCUs or encouraging other paths like community college or technical school. And also, this prestige culture stigmatizes those who choose to go to, say, a state school over an Ivy because of financial considerations. The clout we give to elite colleges is not proportionate to the actual quality of education provided. Everyone says this, but it is true. You can get an equally great education at pretty much any school if you put in the work. And you can get a shitty education at Harvard. It really just comes down to what you make of it. So ask yourself, why do you want to go to college? To learn? To meet people? To improve your job prospects? To make connections? You can do these things anywhere. So I feel like for a lot of people, the real answer is the club. And because of this, education, which I think should be a public good, has been co-opted into a commodity. I feel like this pursuit of prestige kind of infects everybody so that we all contribute to building this cult of personality around these schools. We build this mystique of untouchability in the way we talk about them, the way we aspire toward them, the way we literally created a genre on YouTube of college decision reaction videos that perpetuates the myth of college grandeur and the whole notion that this is what your entire life has been building up to. And the result of this is that we collectively enable these institutions to wield the power that they do. We allow them to continue being prohibitively expensive. These hoes so powerful, they have us begging to go into crippling debt. I also think the idyllic aura we construct around these schools veils a lot of the ugliness underneath. Like for example, so many of these prestigious schools are huge contributors to the gentrification of their communities. Like UPenn uses its status as a nonprofit to avoid paying property taxes to the city of Philadelphia when the Philly public school system is like $500 million in debt. And Columbia does the same thing. And also, when I was younger, I think I had this romanticized view that colleges were somehow the arbiters of moral character, like, they only let in good people. But then, white supremacist Chad from your history class gets into Dartmouth and you're like, oh, just kidding, never mind. But on the real though, I know so many shitty people who go to big name schools and so many incredible people who don't. I feel like a lot of people spend their teenage years crafting personas based on the perceived standards set by these faceless institutions. Like, they'll do extracurriculars they hate for years just to get into college. But college is not the end game. If you waste away your formative years becoming a walking resume, then after the college process is over, then what? Who are you? I think we should spend this time doing self-discovery. Find what you're passionate about, do good for others, build meaningful relationships, practice compassion and gratitude, figure out how you can better yourself and your community and the world. Oh, and if you're still in middle school and you're watching college videos, stop it right now. Go outside and play or something. And for those of you who feel pressure from the fear of parental disappointment, remember you do not owe your parents shit. You do not ask to be born. You are an autonomous being who does not exist solely to vicariously fulfill the unmet dreams of your parents. At the end of the day, we're all just meat sacks with electrical cabbages in our heads, chilling on a wet rock floating in space, descending toward the heat death of the universe. Go live your motherfucking life!